Creativity. Um, Enjoyment. Fun. Thinking outside of the box. It's like improv, isn't it? Um, creativity. Stretching, but... Fun. Quirkiness. Yeah, probably just stretching. Being a rule breaker or a rule maker rather than a rule taker. <laughs> Enthusiasm. Learning. Play. Different. It's different. It's a different approach. Making films. Are these too short now, by the way? Yeah. Uh, new ideas. Great way for the students to learn what could be potentially boring topics. Creativity is a key skill to practice in school that will set them up for the rest of their lives. Creativity is essential. Classroom culture meaning? There's no wrong answer. And I suppose the only way to do that really is... Praise. Teachers not saying no. I guess what I like to try and do is... I try to create a culture of individualism. I think it's important that the students are all happy and comfortable. They know that they can say anything they want to and, you know, not be scared to sort of have original or divergent thoughts. It's, it's, a, it's an interesting question. It's an example of coming up with making creativity happen. It's a long tape, yeah? If you're going to be creative, um, you can't have any worries in your mind. An example of creativity. Creativity comes from our students when, you, when they're excited. It's not something you can just do straight away. Being able to take risks. Without fear that if they get it wrong, there's going to be any kind of shame or disappointment on their part. I think... Um... The unexpected. <laughs> What's that mean? <laughs> I think an environment where they can talk to each other. I always plan my lessons where there's a sense of excitement created right from the beginning. Kids can be comfortable. Ask you questions. And actually getting it wrong is part of the process of getting it right, isn't it? The silent classroom is not a good creativity classroom, I don't think. Taking a risk in your teaching um, can create brilliant results and unexpected responses from students. Engagement and creativity. I think the two really go together. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I'm not really sure what you mean by that. Creativity is a very important role to keep my class engaged. Because I think sometimes lessons, if you have students who are misbehaving, they're misbehaving because they're bored. I think... Um, no one can be creative unless they really want to put a little bit of themselves into something. When creativity is being generated within the classroom, there's a great sense of ownership with the students. That really sort of fosters engagement. You can't make a pupil creative, it's got to come from within. Daydreaming doesn't always go with creativity. <laughs> They're often thinking about other things. Sorry, can you repeat the question back to me again? I can feel I was drifting, go on. If you asked a student, would you prefer a lesson where it's teacher-led or a lesson where it's going to be very creative, where students are allowed to do many, many things to try and reach the same goal? I know which one they'd answer and they would, in they would enjoy the creativity more. Yes. Totally, yes. I would say so. Different things work with different classes. I think you've got to be flexible to the individuals that you're teaching. I like to think that I am quite flexible. Sometimes it might mean moving out of your comfort zone. This way. I think it is important to be flexible because with creativity it's bound to go off in unexpected directions. And sometimes you will try something and it won't work and it will fall flat on its face. Yeah, definitely. You have to be flexible as a teacher to do anything. You've still got to know what it is you want. You have to let the students lead to a certain extent, of course. If you're work, walking around and you're watching their, their projects, something will just occur to you. Well, I think as a teacher, it's very important that you have that flexibility to allow students to go off in an area that you yourself may never even have thought of. So instead of having a learning outcome, for example, I tend to have a learning question. You have to be more flexible, you have to be prepared for the unpredictable. So I've, I've got to scratch my leg <laughs> for five minutes. That's been, I didn't want to duck out of frame, go on. And very often they'll come up with better, more creative ideas than, than I would myself. Which one shall I pick? Um... A conversation in the doctor's surgery. One of my favourite is the pub quiz. Things that really work. Really nice interactive things that I've used. 
pictures, certain materials, objects. A box of goodies on the table and say, OK, play with them. It's not in a pub, obviously. <laughs> Producing something really creative like a song. Zwei Augen, zwei Ohren, die lange spitze Nase, Kopf, Schulze, Knie und See, Knie und See. <laughs> it's students in groups. And like a pub quiz, they discuss the answers together as the questions go about. Have you heard of the exquisite corpse? I can give you a pra very practical example, for instance. Photos and film. and Do a radio advert. Music. Different types of media. You do a little brochure. Grab anything. YouTube. I'm really up to date with it now. Anymore? <laughs> I'm putting people's in role. Not sort of putting on silly voices and kind of, you know, jumping around, but sort of immersing a student in or students in a text. I played an officer on a ship full of prisoners going to Australia in the 1600s. Interactive games. Have you heard of the exquisite court? We did a lesson um, recently about Cinderella. You get a sheet of paper. Now bear in mind this is a girls' school, so obviously that wouldn't work with the boys probably. Well, maybe it would, but... You'll start just with a simple article, the. I show them a trailer of Cinderella uh, on, on the interactive whiteboard. You fold it over and you say, pass it to the next person, and you say, OK, now you've, you've got to um, write an adjective. It was things like romance, you know, a love story, uh, Cinderella meets the prince and the, the language was very easy to master. They fold it over and they pass it to the next person. Gave them a choice of how they wanted to present their trailer. And they have to put an adverb. They had the choice to do a poster, to do a PowerPoint. And so on. Record a little TV programme. And you unravel it and you've got this, this wonderfully abstract sentence that comes up, this surrealist, um, this surrealist comment. So the, the, the actual outcome was very varied. And it's a lovely way for them to see that everyone can bring something subtle, something unique to a little collaborative piece. That's creativity, I think. I think it's actually really difficult. I hope there's not going to be any outtakes in this programme. Oh yeah, sorry. I don't know if you have to plan better, but you have to plan differently. Yeah, you have to plan it. Yeah, definitely. The find involves a lot more planning. When it comes to creative lessons, there's a sense that... To some extent, creativity is unexpected. Sometimes it just happens in the lesson that the lesson turns into something quite creative. Really, to do a good creative lesson, you've got to be enthusiastic and be feeling creative yourself. It's funny, to, the more flexible I am, I think the more plans I need. You want to have prepared materials that the students might need. Creativity has to have a structure to it for it to actually work. Um, I've had a few lessons where it's just not worked. You want to have a plan as, as to the task that you want to set. I suppose in a very dull way, you often begin your planning by looking at what you actually have to do for the curriculum, so what, what the end product might be. If you're working on a project or a fairly long uh, and high level piece of work, then it's probably a good idea to plan it in advance very carefully. So I suppose then you sort of have to work backwards and think how can you make this original and exciting and interesting and engaging for students. A lot of plan B's and C's and D's in case it all goes wrong, which has happened before. You don't want that student with the, the broken nose because the stage combat's gone wrong. No, I don't think so. I think all good teachers take risks. Risk is a good thing. The rewards are far greater too. I think so, certainly in, in my science classes. There's a, there's a natural tendency, I guess, to be a bit of a control freak as a teacher. Can I slouch? Is that OK? Yeah. It's been a long week, you know? <laughs> I think it's very easy just to use the textbook. It's a safe option. If people are sitting in roles and uh, sitting in in rows and they're nice and meek and mild, there's a sense, oh, things must be going all right because the kids are quiet. Well, I find it boring. I, I prefer taking the risks, getting the kids to do it, be a bit noisy even. Students enjoy lessons um, when teachers take risks and they can try out new things. And it's more risky for the students as well. And I think you have to be aware that you, you don't want to put students in a position where they may feel uncomfortable. So of course there's a risk. There's a risk that people will be off task. There's a risk that um, things will go wrong, that they'll make mistakes, that they'll fail. It's a nice stress and it's a, a nice risk and, you know, every time I've done it, it's paid off. The learning they achieve by allowing this creativity, I think, is worth the risks that you might take.
We've been kicked out of our drama space because it's being used for an assembly. We've got a canal around the corner. Spacing is really important. Change of scenery. It depends on the task, doesn't it? And we've had to go and have our lesson in a classroom. I think just moving to a different space can actually make students feel more creative and, and respond differently to one another. It means also a change of uh, ideas. That's what being creative is. It's using, it can be using the space in an interesting way, in a way that will be meaningful for your students. Walk into the classroom and suddenly you're not in a classroom. You're in a jungle with your group of year seven students and they're not sitting on their chairs and tables they're underneath their chairs and their tables and they're carrying from the heavy rains in the rainforest. If you've got 32 children in a very small classroom it can be a bit harder. I think at the end of the day if teachers are good enough they could do it anywhere they could probably be here on the field with me now. Taking students outside is going to be fabulous for inspiration. I'll often take my students up to our field uh, to the woodland setting and create drama outside. But it may also be quite distracting too. I'm trying not to squint in the sun to be honest. That surprise to them that we're leaving the classroom and we're going outside creates really creative responses from them. Oh, we got science, great, instead of, oh, science again. It opens up different parts of the brain. It's just fun, isn't it? I think we want students to be creative because it makes them independent learners. Serious questions on creativity. All right, some kind of oxymoron there, isn't there? <laughs> you've got a really happy classroom, you've got really positive students. I don't know what I'm going to get from them if I take them outside, if I make them do different things, if I throw different objects at them, if I keep them on their toes. Some students who may not excel in some areas really love to be creative. That's obviously what we want our students to do, is to be coming up with new ideas, new ways of looking at things. If it goes wrong here, it doesn't matter too much, but then they've rehearsed that experience for, you know, when they're in a job. And not only that, but they often retain the information so much better because it's such an unusual experience they've had. Hungry stomachs, you kills it. One thing not to do. Okay. What can kill creativity? You talk all the time if you don't listen to them. It's very easy to kill creativity. And it's the an anecdote stuff, isn't it? Boring, dull, monotone tired teachers. Why would you want to do that? If I were to constrain them too much. Say no. That probably is the biggest creativity murderer that I can think of, textbooks. If somebody asks an interesting question and you shut it down and you don't allow your lesson plan to deviate. You know, knowing exactly what you want from it and not allowing the students to do anything but that. I don't know about killing it. Uh... That's that's very difficult. I mean, I personally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to be in that school. I don't want to. I don't want to think about them now. <laughs> I don't know. Never have students working on their own all the time. They need to work with each other. I, th I think the second that the students think that they might be doing something wrong, they can't do that. No, that doesn't work, that's awful. Creativity is relying on the students being happy. But by teachers saying, no, that's rubbish, you're not going to get any response from the kids. So encouragement. Students have got huge amount of expertise and skills, and if you're stifling that, I think you're probably going to take the enjoyment out of education. But the way you avoid creativity being killed... Teachers being energetic, lively, and, you know, enthused with their subject, which hopefully I am. Maybe a bit too much.